As we collect data, it's very important we consider the sampling technique we use to obtain a good set of data. It's important as we're sampling, we select a random sample. And there are several ways we can do this. Let's say, for example, we want to know how instructors at a large school feel about a new college policy. So we're not going to survey all the instructors because that's too many people. That takes too much time. So we're going to get a random sample. There's several ways we can do a random sample. One way is what's called a simple random sample. A simple random sample will use a random number generator. to select participants. So for our example, where we want to know about the how instructors feel about the new college policy, we are going to give each instructor a number and use the random number generator to select 10 of them. And then maybe I'll go to those 10 offices and talk to those 10 people to see what they think about the new policy. Simple random sampling is probably the most common random sampling method that's used, but there are several others that are used in statistics. One of them is called systematic random sampling. Systematic random sampling means we're going to select every nth member from a random stand starting point. So if we were to use systematic random sampling for our instructor sample, what we might do is we might list the instructors alphabetically choose one random one and then go down the list and choose every maybe ninth instructor after that. And so we'll go through the whole list, choosing every ninth instructor to get our full sample. Another type of random sampling that we might use is called stratified random sampling. A strata is another word for group. The idea is we're going to split everybody up into groups and we're going to select a proportion from each group. So an example of stratified random sampling for our college policy and surveying our instructors is we could split the instructors into departments, those are our groups, and then we're going to choose one-fifth of each department. 
So that way, each department is represented in our survey. Another way we can work with groups, though, is with what is called clustered random sampling. Clustered random sampling also splits into groups. But then in, instead of selecting a proportion from each group, we select a few groups randomly and use all the members from those groups. So for example, we're still going to split the instructors into departments. But then we're going to choose four departments and interview all the instructors from those departments. When generating a sample, it's important we get a random sample because we want that random sample to be representative of the entire population. However, random samples are not always possible. And quite often in statistical analysis, sampling is done poorly, and we end up with what is called a non-random sample. Non-random samples are frowned upon in statistics because they don't necessarily represent the entire population. Often, non-random samples are also called convenience samples, where we just use the results that are readily available. So in our example with the faculty, maybe we just ask the faculty in the dining hall today. So just well, I want to know information. I'm going to catch the faculty that I can easily and conveniently. It's not a random sample. It doesn't represent the faculty as a whole. The problem is with these random samples is they create what's called a bias. The sample is not representative of the population. For example, if we only ask the faculty in the dining hall, those are probably on-campus face-to-face instructors. We are not talking to any online instructors. And maybe they are going to view the policy differently. And so bias creates problems in statistical analysis because the sample statistics cannot be used to estimate the population parameters. We don't like non-random sampling.